Tonight, Matt Powell finally admits it. I have not actually looked into Darwin at all. Steve expresses humility. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And Aaron lets me know what he really thinks of me. Do you know what you sound like as you say I'm dumb? <laughs> Why hello my fellow apes, I hope you are well. And welcome back to Low Fruit, where we go rummaging in the dirt for the worst possible arguments. We do indeed. This time we have found the trinity. Well, the unholy trinity. Yeah. Of like polished turds for sure <laughs> now this, this came about because there was this weird homeless satanist outside and he wanted to film an episode with us on low fruit he knocked the window it was really weird so we let him in and then we filmed an episode with him but the episode wasn't long enough for a full low fruit so well certainly yeah. not well we had this hmm. amazing idea because you know we are genius oh, oh yeah oh yeah, yeah, yeah and and this is it's incredible that nobody else has ever thought to do this why not do three smaller videos in one episode? It and just... three, three, get this right. It's in the Fibonacci sequence. So, yeah. you know, like, it all just, it all just, it all makes okay. sense now. It all makes sense. It is incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three is in the Fibonacci sequence. So, yeah. But what three pinnacles, oh, pinnacles. of Christian yeah, yeah. theology do we have for you today? Well, first and foremost, we've got the man that sells uh, used cars to snake oil salesmen. <laughs> and then we have yeah. the man who's soon to give his 30 year old powerpoint presentation in prison <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got the uh well frankly the the moldy left testicle of said man so yeah you're you're in for a treat no, not. Let's, let's, i'm already no, feeling not. exhausted yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. thinking about them yeah this is not gonna be good all right let's just um <laughs> let's start with that really weird homeless dude we found all right let's yeah, go let's we'll do cut this over to yeah. that one all right let's go so here we are, ready to record Low Fruit, and who do we find wandering the streets of Portsmouth completely lost? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <The only change. laughs> he, yeah, he's knocking everyone's door going, do you have a moment to talk about our Lord and Saviour, Satan? No, do not. Do not. Yeah. Now, well, oh God, no, 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 you, you introduce this weird man, I'm not doing it. Well, you've pretty much done it. This is Wretched Radio telling us about how we shouldn't listen to metal music, if you're a Christian, that is. You like metal, don't you? Good. So this part is easy. If your Christian metal music is theologically wrong or low, get rid of it. What does it mean for metal music to be theologically wrong? <laughs> I think it means to be scientifically correct. <laughs> no, but like, seriously, what is theologically wrong music? That just sounds like, it's just, it just sounds like, hey, that's, that's geographically wrong tasting. Like, <laughs> but theologically wrong yeah. is redundant. <laughs> yeah. If it means the same thing. Yeah, if it's not worshipping God, then it's evil. I guess that's what it's going to go for. Well, let us find out. This second issue, though, is a little bit trickier. If the music does not rightly represent the character and the nature of God, I would suggest you want to think about it long and hard. And he says this is a Christian, bearing no respect for the fact that he's not representing Krishna properly at all. No. Well, I just want to say, your, mu want your music has to represent God. In which part of God? The genocidal bit? I would have said death metal would do pretty well for a genocidal God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Satan laughing spreads his wings, right? You know, this is this, this, God, or, or say, um... Ozzy said that he was you know, he was very religious people, or at least his wife said so, and he wrote in all these lyrics. You know, look at all the songs that, that, that Ozzy wrote, where he's you know, Christ is the only way to love, and all like this. Does that count? That's heavy metal, right? <laughs> it's fucking Ozzy. You don't get much more metal than that. But I just want to go yeah. on. If thematically relevant music to God, right? There's a game I quite like, and it's got a really good bit of music. Now, tell me that this music does not match. Noah's Flood. And as you think right. of this music, right, I want you to picture the murderous state of Noah's Ark. Yeah, tell me this doesn't match Noah's Flood. And the Lord said, I will destroy man who I have created from the face of the earth. Water killing them all. Ah, my leg! <laughs> 
doesn't have to be metal. It's that fits God, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and, and you mentioned something really that really struck me at the beginning. He's representing Christ. He's walking around, getting the camera to follow him, so he can literally say, "Look at how much money I've got. <laughs> yeah. Look, look at how humble I am. Look at how much heaven is going to give to me. Look, look at how." It's just it's he's supposed to yeah, surrender yeah. his wealth and give it to the poor and to and to help out uh, immigrants. Yeah, this is why people spend a lot of money when it comes a to lot of stuff. money. <laughs> a lot. Of, <laughs> his his pronunciation is some of the weirdest cadence I've seen. With, oh, it's all over the show. Yeah, you're you're in for a treat. Comes to writing soundtracks for movies. The music sets the tone and the mood. It tells you there's a guy with a hockey mask around the tool shed with an axe. Otherwise known as God. He's round the corner, mask on, it's all love. With the axe ready Genesis. to kill you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to turn you to salt. And he's holding a spear. Guy yeah. couldn't even... Well, he said hacked, didn't he? He's holding a spear. <laughs> <laughs> ready to kill you. Or... The music tells you that somebody's about to die in their hospital bed, and you better start turning on the tear ducts real quick. Real quick? Real we got to talk like this. Well, I used to do voices for the Muppets. And the <laughs> <laughs> he has used that meme, and that, that's points in my book. What, Spider-Man? <laughs> yeah, 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 it's great, it's great. I just love how he, he thinks... Music has to be thematically relevant to God, but surely any sort of music can be relevant to anything, as long as you're putting the right lyrics down, putting the tunes that you think that you think match your feelings about it. Why is he so? Mm. Is it a fake fact that he will only accept one type of music? Is he one of these people? I, <laughs> I, I think that's that's his his problem. He would he would much rather look. Deal with American country music where it's all about cheating and gambling and fighting and drinking. Oh, that sounds very Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it that the, the highest numbers of those people tend to be Christians and atheists don't tend to have those many problems with that? <laughs> Why is it that statistically more evangelicals get abortions than atheists yeah. do? They're, they're the ones that are against abortions. Why do they get so many of them? They also have the higher divorce rate. Of course, they have the higher murder rate. They, they are uh, statistically more likely to endorse torture of prisoners and, of course, the death penalty. Not realizing that the death penalty is kind of meaningless when every murderer who's a religious person thinks that God agrees with them as to why they did what they did, why they blew up all those people. Well, you're part of my mission. And as soon as you get executed, I'm going to put you up here at the table with me and you will live forever with yeah. you however many rewards I can give you. Because that's what they're thinking. If they believe you're actually... The death penalty surely helps someone get to heaven faster. Exactly. Instead of actually punishing It's a way of getting... Them. It's literally <laughs> get out of jail. <laughs> now, if you can only say that while Aaron holds the camera and you spin around, <laughs> like we'd have his production quality. <laughs> no, we haven't got enough random items in the background. <laughs> I want to hear more about this emotive Muppet voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, let's do this. <laughs> Music speaks, and when we put together... <laughs> what has he got that for? <laughs> He's just picked that up out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> He needs a he needs right, a hand. Yeah, 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 he needs a hold of thing speak, in the hand. <laughs> yeah, you can have you can have my favourite, right? Please, if you're going to speak, hold a weird object for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> when we speak, <laughs> when we speak, we use the voice of a muppet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I feel like this is what low fruit was made for. <laughs> okay, so he's holding a magnifying glass. Yeah, Why? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. But the magnifying glass, as you can see, has a handle on it. He has a handle handle. I'm going to bet that he does something analogous with it. They always go, this was made by a human or something like that. Like, I'm thinking... So you think that this yeah, music about yeah, yeah. video... Yeah. will have some important relevance with this magnifying glass. A magnifying yeah. glass relates to music. Yeah. Because a magnifying glass enables you to see, <laughs> and we're talking about hearing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little confused where this is going to go. And so, 
I would just volley this question right back into your court. He can't put the magnifying glass down now because he's walked away from the table he got it from. <laughs> he's got to keep it for the rest of the video. Do you think he walked? <laughs> he, he picked it up he went, oh no, I'm committed now. <laughs> I better find an analogy for this. I can't do it's another just... take, gotta just keep it. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't, it's too expensive to do another take. I got a shelf full of random shit that doesn't have yeah, anything yeah, yeah. to do with anything, so I can put it there. Hey, that's where all the tithe goes. That, that's, all, that's, all, that's all the money. What does metal music sound like? I grant you. They, they ask the question, what does metal music sound like? And then they show somebody silent. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show you metal. Listen to the intro I've just chosen for casually debunked. That's, that's in the metal genre. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. cool. How can you say, what does metal sound like? Well, what sort of genre of metal? Because yeah. it's not like they're all the same. No. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, I find that lately, I mean, I, I have my classics, of course. I always loved you know, Ozzy and Judas Priest, still yep. do. But of the current bands, I favor more um, Ginger and In This Moment. Yeah, I can't buy your heart. We'll have to check that out we'll after we'll later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing that got me when I was young is I was getting into rock music, Christian rock music. I got into Skillet. I got into bands like them. Loved them. Oh, I still yeah. love them. Talk right? to my wife about Skillet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I, I love that band, right? And then I realized that the lyrics that exactly sound like they're talking about, hey, I'm breaking up with my girlfriend or something, was actually, or I, I need to live with my girlfriend, was actually them going, I can't live without Jesus. Yeah. And I was, I, I, I felt like that worked in terms of like getting me in the door. Because I was like, actually, I'm listening it's to It's one of those yeah, yeah. loosely interpretable to whatever you want it to be. It's like um, a yeah, yeah. hero song. Yeah. It's quite a good one. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, their yeah, video yeah. is about, you know, firefighters yeah. and stuff like that. And you think, oh, that's a pretty good song. Yeah. When you actually listen to it, no, their hero is Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and the, yeah, the thing is, is that once you figure that out, I just think that that entire segment, I, lo I like the music, they're just sellouts. <laughs> like if you're in a, if you're in a Christian band and you're writing lyrics to try and like appeal to everybody because you can't just actually speak speak about Jesus, you're a sellout and God knows it. <laughs> like good luck. <laughs> I'm slightly butthurt. Anyway, let, let's let's <laughs> see want, some more music. Mention, <laughs> there, there's there's some there's some bands out there that that have Christian names and are very not Christian, so mm. you might be a little confused. There's there's people like with names like Creator, for example, mm -hmm. uh, and and one in particular, uh, Lamb of God. We have some friends that were in a Lamb yeah. of God video, and they they're Satanists. <laughs> yeah. good. Very Satanist. Well, that would that would add to him going. Metal is terrible. Well, let, let's yeah, see some more of what metal sounds like. Subjective. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Somewhat subjective, but what does it sound like? Are you gonna play, well, play it? it? Play it! And it's Kiss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah, Kiss yeah. is not metal. Yeah. <laughs> that is, by the way, the way every Christian sees anyone that doesn't believe in their stuff. They're also, that's, that's, that's how, how they know, see you. Not a Christian band as such <laughs> either. Yeah, well, it, this is meant to be about Christian yeah, metal. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, back in the back of the eighties, they were called Knights in Satan's Service. <laughs> back, back during the, the Satanic Panic. But I mean, okay, so they did one metal song. Uh, they did God of Thunder and Rock and Roll. That was that was a good song, and probably primarily because the the producer decided this isn't good enough. I need to cut in bits of recordings of my children playing with their walkie talkies, and that gave it the whole demonic. Put children. Mm playing in the background of the song and then it became creepy as fuck if you oh. haven't heard it i'll love to play it yeah, for yeah, yeah no, that sounds good that sounds good yeah but they, but they also kiss also released a disco album <laughs> <laughs> so while they have metal band <laughs> <laughs> while they have one metal song they have a whole bunch more that are effectively disco mm. <laughs> they they are not Metal. Consider the difference between kind of the you know stuff. Can I just say that that cadence is nicer than hearing him preach? <laughs> Gen generally, I'm in. I'm in. You know, there was a, there was a time in when I, in my youth when I used to think that okay, that it just sounds like this this guy's running a skill saw over an amplifier, <laughs> and and his his microphone is basically just he put it into his mouth and he's gargling. <laughs> So he's gargling a phallic item, preaching, <laughs> don't. 
I was trying to make fun yeah. of the music, but then you know, it, it, like it, like it, 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 many critics of some things, when you start exploring a little bit more, you think, you know, actually, no, I. What I'm listening to now is shit, and I prefer this. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff with a harp or an organ. Sorry, harp is used in metal. Can They're not mutually exclusive. There's, yeah. a, there's a band that uses violins. Is there well, cellos. Uh, 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 cellos, sorry. Yeah, 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 sorry. Uh, uh, there's also... Elevity. There's also a yeah, pair of... Yeah. Apocalyptica? Yeah. There's yeah, also yeah. a pair of identical twins, beautiful girls, I've seen who, them. who play harp. They do yeah. metal covers Excellent. on a harp. Yeah. Uh, all right, it's, I want to sick. see that. It's sick. Be great. it's sick, it's sick, it's sick. In fact, where they're YouTubers, I might be able to play a tiny segment to entice people without getting copyrighted. Yeah. So we, we'll see, but it's really cool. Or just a guitar. Different types of guitars. 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 Well, we've guitars. come back to my country now. <laughs> is, is that meant to be the sound it makes? <laughs> That's some of the best country music we've had here in a long time. Oh, we love our guitars. <laughs> that actually reminds me of the accent that Cole Butt has, uh, oh. where he gets an extra syllable when dog. 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 <laughs> That's one of the things I hated about country music. There was, yeah. there was this guy named Mo Bandy in the late 70s. And yeah, it was just, yeah. every song he sang <laughs> was always about a woman <laughs> and a honky tonk. Like every word's about a second longer than it needs to be, and everybody I know that I've, I've met, I know people. There are people in my family that have an accent yeah. like that, and I've asked them, "Do you know what you sound like?" Because you sound dumb. <laughs> to be fair, should that like, not be dumb? <laughs> dumb, dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it on that one. It's good. <laughs> in other words, you decide on this issue, but don't overlook. When we put together lyrics and music, we've got form and function colliding, and it must represent God. Here's where you need to cut into a scene of and I'm all, and I'm all, bashing away on the drums. And I'm all, and I'm all. Rightly, on both counts. Right. I've got to get that one more time. In other words, you decide on this issue, but don't overlook. When we put together lyrics and music, we've got form and function colliding, and it must represent God. Who are you to decide what music represents God? Because yeah. there's some segments, uh, denominations, that it's certainly in religion in general, they say that if you want to represent God, you can't use mu music. Like, yeah, that's music one, is a sin. Yeah, music is a sin. And then it's like, what genres? Why? Like, who gets to sing? And it's like... Well, you're who, almost at a point yeah. in not even music. You go outside. Your art has to correctly represent God. What style of drawing am I allowed to use? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I just yeah, I lost the, the plot of the whole thing because it just suddenly th focused on... I wonder how <laughs> this man <laughs> speaks to his wife when they are in... in Internet. <laughs> Rightly. Be <like> Rightly. <laughs> you must that was perfect. You must do it. Rightly. <laughs> Rightly. <laughs> oh no, that, that part, that's a that's a sin. <laughs> no, who's my daddy? <laughs> oh my God. Do you do you reckon? Sorry, sorry, real, real question. I don't want you laughing, it's serious, okay? Do you think he holds an item for no fucking reason? <laughs> he's, he's having a go. He's just there holding a random thing. <laughs> no, you can't touch this man. <laughs> well, that at least has some symbolism that's relevant to what we're talking yeah, yeah. about, right? Yeah. yeah, you are jousting, that's true. Whereas him, he's just looking. Just looking. <laughs> So, yeah, that's, um, well... No, no, no. Ooh. There's still a few more seconds. Detective Friel, can you tell us what's happening here? Um, yeah, what's happening here is a clear demonstration of the noetic effect of the fall. Genesis 2, Paul elaborates in Romans chapter 3, Jeremiah... I even cringe. I can't cringe anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that face. We've got to use that on the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> that is... The, that is so... What the... That is cringe incarnate. Okay, this is so, cringy Christianity, just straight out the box. What is actually happening that he's decided to make all about his religion? Is it a car wreck? I mean, I'm listening to ambulance or, or some kind of sirens going on. Yeah, he's I, like I somehow a wreck think, of society. I somehow think mm. that this has nothing to do with how many animals were on the fucking ark. Or, <laughs> or, or, 
the other thing I want to say, this was a, a two minute 30 video. Yeah. The last 40 seconds are this car crash. Yeah. Well, the whole video is a car crash, but <laughs> the, the last 40 seconds especially are a car crash. Yeah. So that means we've had a mini, minute 50 talking about music, of which we've not heard any examples of music. None. So maybe you can I, cut in like 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 five seconds oh yeah, 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 for, no, for different I'll, brands that have been brought up. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, we'll yeah, yeah absolutely. But I will say the, the closest thing we got to metal music is that weird, weird thing he's just played at the end. Which is him doing it. No, I think the closest we got to metal was the metal arm of the magnifying glass. Oh, that's what he meant. Christian, that's what he... It all makes sense now. That's... Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Anyway, that well, I, was terrible. Yeah, like, you've you got, you got to go back out and start preaching now, haven't you? Uh, now that I know not to listen to mental music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we, we have this tendency to plug each other's channel in a terrible way, so we're going to have a go at yours, okay? Okay. Here's a pirate that sometimes talks about atheism. Have fun. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> so there we are. We were lucky enough to get Aaron Ra once again for this visit to, well, Steve's office. <laughs> yeah. And I, well, to be fair, it was brilliant to have him because when I've been to Austin a couple of times, him and his wife have shown just wonderful hospitality and kindness to me. So, and I'm sure you're experience, you will experience that when you go out there. Which Hopefully next yeah, time yeah, I can drive on as well. Um, yeah, it, yeah, it good. really was great, but... Mm. He did completely ruin our plans for this episode. Yeah, unbelievable. So, well, at least we're a third done already. Yeah, that's we're true. We haven't even started yeah, yet we're, today. We're, yeah, so, um, all good. This is the same coffee you saw me with earlier. <laughs> mm. Which means I am now a little more mentally intact than I otherwise be. Certainly more mentally intact than our audience is today. Yeah, but we're going to... they've had to hear that already. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. But <laughs> we're, we're about to deal with Hovind. Yeah. I, which I, is I, why I, being... I can wake up fresh. And I'm like, nah, I'm not, I've got no time for this crap. <laughs> But we do it for you because you give us views. Hi, folks. My name's Kent Hovind. I was a high school science teacher 15 years. So we are dealing with, okay, six evidences for young earth creationism. From your host, Gaping Anus, 06452017. <laughs> That's what he's going to be called from now on. Is that how many times he's given his presentation? <laughs> it, might, it might be, actually. <laughs> All right. So the last time we dealt with uh, Mr. Hovind, we um we talked about his quite frankly impressive dishonesty. Yeah. And here we are, three seconds in. Three seconds in. Well done. It's the three again. It's in the Fibonacci oh. right here. Um, and he, uh, <laughs> never going to let that one down. Um, yeah, he's just said that he was a school science teacher for fifteen years. For fifteen years, he wasn't. No, he he wasn't. He never taught. Um, science as a well, at a school that requires accreditation. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. He he's basically taught creationism mm. at a church yeah. or multiple churches rather. Yeah, and I, I'm sorry, but the former doesn't count as science, and the latter doesn't count as a school. Absolutely correct. <laughs> Absolutely correct. I have just noticed, and yeah. uh, um, it's, he's done. He's done what Pal did. Yeah, yeah. This is <laughs> this is Kent Hoven's channel official. Official. <laughs> Featuring. Featuring Ken Hovind. <laughs> Where have we seen that before? Yeah, well, why? <laughs> this is so strange. All right. Let's, let, anyway, let's, let's carry on with this pseudo teacher. And I love studying about the Bible and what the Bible teaches in regard to science. God said very clearly that he made everything in six days. Are those, um, are those metaphorical days? Days where the, the mm. sun was created after the earth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, hang on. Days where there wasn't a sun to measure a day. <laughs> now, how could you show the age of the earth? Well, I think the very best evidence of what some people call a young earth is God said he did it in six days. Okay, so Hovind insists that the very best evidence in favor of young earth creationism is that God says in the Bible <laughs> that he created the universe in six <laughs> days. <laughs> Could be metaphorical days, I'm just saying, but yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 what are you getting? What are you getting? Well, in this comic book, mm. uh, Edward lost his leg trying to resurrect his mother. And we know this happened because it says so in this comic book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's absolutely brilliant. I also, love it. Yeah, yeah. given that his, his proof of, of recent creation is how long it took God to create it, 
Let's talk about non sequiturs to a moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. How long have you had that cup of coffee? <laughs> well, it took me a couple of minutes to boil the kettle. <laughs> I think the very best evidence of what some people call a young earth is God said he did it in six days and nothing died until Adam sinned. And Jesus said that was the beginning of the creation. Nothing died until Adam sinned. And Jesus said that that was the beginning of creation. Well, mm. <laughs> yeah. surely creation would have to be before Adam's... Well, <laughs> things couldn't die before they were created. I, <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying that if Adam sinned before anything was created then just that is a miracle i'll give you that that's pretty that's pretty well, impressive yeah, yeah no yeah. i prefer to put it as it's the car crashed before it was made yeah that's 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 <laughs> that is that is the accurate so let's go through this because it's a short video and yep. so hoven's well you know he can't be spending too much time on this because he's got another five proofs you right. see so we're, we're going to spend a few seconds longer than he does oh yeah yeah yeah. we are we are like look reese how do we know that adam sinned I'm going to take a note from Paul Legere here. Okay, okay. For the Bible tells me so. I like it, I like it. Okay. <laughs> How do we know that Adam existed? Uh, for the Bible tells me so. Mm. Where's that book you had? Yeah. Yeah, how do we know that uh, Edward lost his leg? Oh, yeah, it's, it says it in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how do we know that Edward tried to resurrect his mother? It says it in here. Well, you oh, my silly goodness, I'm so, I'm so sad. How do we know that Edward even existed? I don't. I just, for the comic yeah, book I, tells me so. For the comic book tells me so. Yeah. For, for Metal Alchemist says it. I believe it. That's that. <sighs> Goodness me. Right. Okay. Well, careful. Hang on. Yeah. If Matt Powell hears that, he'll he'll say that we're living in a fantasy world. These atheists that I'm dealing with on the internet, about ninety percent of them always have these posters of. Final Fantasy or Mario Kart. These people, they're obviously living in a fantasy land. Oh yeah, he will. It's him that's like got <laughs> Noah's Ark, people living to 900 years old or more. <laughs> that's not fantasy. You know, that's not fantasy. People being turned into salt. It's not no, fantasy. That can't no, be no, 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 it's not. It's not that's not magic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The idea that cretins like him will get to heaven and not, you know, other people. So the best evidence of a young earth is the Bible. So Hoven has decided. That the best evidence, best ever, the best evidence for the claims in the Bible is the Bible. Begging itself. the question, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where I was getting to. Yes, <laughs> the Bible certainly the dates in Genesis five and Genesis eleven clearly add up to about six thousand years for the total age of the earth, four thousand BC. That's never been refuted. Clearly add up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> clearly, clearly add up. <laughs> As, as we said, you yeah. know, he, he is trying to use the Bible, the contents of the Bible in this case, thankfully, mm. uh, to to prove that it is true. And God, that's garbage. I hate it. I hate. Is, yeah. Well, so putting the begging question aside. Yeah. He's also doing a lot of interpretive work because he's using his interpretation of Genesis oh, to get the to his, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where it's, you know, you take most Christians, they don't have his interpretation. William Lane Craig, you know, you you name them. Like, basically, no one has Hovind's interpretation. And he has to go back to, like, before Darwin to get people yeah. that has his interpretation. Yeah. I, I think my favourite bit of what he said there, though, was um, that the Bible has never been refuted. <laughs> never. Yeah. Not once. Not once. Has never. anything, anything in the Bible ever been refuted. So the, uh... the uh, Yeah. <laughs> the Earth did not... Um, exist prior to the sun. It Des didn't. Despite what the oh. Bible will have you believe. But this would explain, this would explain why he thinks that Adam sinned before creation. <laughs> also, just carrying on on this sort of thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bats are not birds. Yeah, the, yeah. the Bible says that birds were created before land animals, but well, the uh, fossil record yeah. shows that that's not true, doesn't it? You <laughs> Classic though, you can't use the fossil record. It's all a fraud. Oh. It's all a hoax. It's a grand conspiracy just to make him feel like he's not the center of the universe. You're right. I'm. I'm. Yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. The best evidence is, of course, a book that was compiled from many authors over many different time periods. It's been rewritten and retranslated many hundreds of times, Beautiful. where the later chapters contradict the earlier ones. That is, of course, the best evidence. The Quran. <laughs> Now, just to go into the moral realm, most Christians don't think that slavery is okay. No. But it says it is, many oh. times over. Some people don't want to believe that, 
But the best evidence, I think, of what they call, I don't think 6,000 is young, I think that's pretty old. But well, considering that the Bible insists that Adam was, what, 930 or so years old when he died? Something like that. <laughs> 6,000 isn't really that old. Like, No, I mean, how, if, you the, know. if that's if everyone in his family lived that yeah, long, yeah. Oof, you wouldn't be talking many generations, would you? <laughs> no. And we're always talking about time frames as well. Like, there's, there's this tree colony. It's alive today in mm -hmm. Tasmania. And it's, um, I think it was 40... It's at least 40,000 years. It might even be like 43, 44,000 years old. Yeah, that number sounds familiar. Um, um, just remember, we are calling this young earth creationism mm. because we're comparing it to 4.5 billion years. Yeah. Billion, billion years. Yeah, that's and that's just the Earth's age. That's not yeah. the universe. The universe, our local space-time manifold, is 13.7 billion years. It might even be older. And this is a universe with a small U. It could be the case that our local space-time manifold is part of like this greater cosmos that might even be eternal, like Aquinas suggested. It's when, just... It could be infinite. When you put 6,000 mm. years into comparison with billions oh, it's, it, it's, it's about as wrong as thinking that the entire length of the uk is one meter oh yeah <laughs> it's so wrong the best evidence of a six thousand year old earth is the bible itself you have you have already said that you've got a three minute video here <laughs> to give your best proofs of young earth creationism and you're repeating yourself if you that's got, not yeah. a very good use of three minutes <laughs> if you can't fill three minutes with six proofs you, you, you've got a problem get another job <laughs> But then you can look at almost any branch of science. You can look at the, the science of living things, biology, and you'll see that the population of the Earth today is growing, but if you do the math and go backwards in time, you can make everybody on the planet from eight people getting off of Noah's Ark 4,500 years ago. He's, oh, no, yeah, yeah, he's totally right. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah, because, I'm sure you're going to get here as well, Probably. it's because if you start with your conclusion, you can make the maths fit whatever you want. <laughs> That yeah, you were there. Exactly yeah, what yeah, I was yeah, going to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. I'll tell you what. If you're seeing yeah, that yeah. point for me, I'll, I'll make a different one. But, then, so. uh, but my point's better. No, no, okay, no, 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 no this no, is no, definitely no, better because no, no, no. consider, for example, genetic bottlenecking. Yeah, it's going okay. to be impossible to mm -hmm. explain the diversity of humans today with just one family from 4,500 years ago. Especially if you can't have evolution in that mix. Oh, oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're redefining their their um the same type the same form to be really broad in order to allow that in <laughs> but um yeah this claim with mathematics and coming off the arc and then going from there it's been given by young earth creationists many times and they've, they've got a few alterations in, in the mathematics they provide we mm. shouldn't presume what he's going to use because yeah. we get accused of straw manning sure, sure so let's let's find out the the, the only pre the only presumption i'll yeah, make yeah. is that he'll try to get a square peg into a round hole that's a fair prediction. I'm not, I'm not going to bet against that. I also bet that. If man's been here for millions of years, why aren't there a whole lot more people? Population is a great indicator that man has not been here for millions of years. When you look at the genetic load that's increasing... In where's, where's, where's the math? Show us the math. There would have been a whole lot more people. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> no! no that's, he's not. Come on, we're eager. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's going to no, be no, good. Sorry. Con considering that they is insist things like um, the Aust Australopithecines, yeah. well, basically all intermediate forms are not humans. True. Hovind would have to be talking about actually modern humans. So 300,000. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, yeah. we don't claim that we've, you know, we mm. have been here for millions of years. It's about 300,000 years. Yeah, he's even got so that we, wrong. So we can't have that claim in there. He's wrong. <laughs> in fact, the idea that he could teach anything. <laughs> when you look at the genetic load that's increasing in the gene pool of people. W what? He's moving on. I'm moving on already. <laughs> what? This is what in the as that, fuck is that? This is worthless as the Matt Powell dinosaur proofs that we had. This is. This is convenient. Straight yeah, on yeah. without saying anything. And that one featured Powell, just as this <laughs> featured Hovind. <sighs> Coincidence. Yeah. Well, all, all I can really say then is that that which is asserted without evidence at, well, I was going to go with Hitchens Raisin, but uh, Raisin. R raisin? <laughs> Hitchens I've Raisins. Now, yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, Hitchens okay, Raisins. Okay, okay. I'm going to do Are it they with... chocolate raisins? No, definitely not. Oh, but they're the best. They're, they're, they're made of whiskey. That's it. Whiskey yeah, raisins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're Johnny Black label. Um, we'll go with that. Which is... Is it whiskey or is it rum? 
No, he liked his whiskey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Anyway, we are getting <laughs> off track. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I'm going to say Hitch and Razor, but I'm going to do Hitch it in the raisin. style Hitch and Raisins in the style <laughs> of Wretched. You ready? Okay. Why? That which is asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. Oh, it feels gross. I, I'm not surprised that was awful to hear. Oh, I also don't I, think I'm that really was a sorry. very good effort of his like, racks and you, you have a go, you have a go, you have a go. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, all right, no. all right. Um I do have to wonder. Yeah. Does Hoven's mathematical estimation of which we have no idea what it is because he's not presented it. Yeah. Um does it consider anything like uh disease, scarcity of resources, oh, no, no. war? No. What about changes in the number of offspring that <laughs> people have? Because well, today it's a, a lot less than it was even last century. So he gave us nothing. Oh, that's true. Nothing. Nothing to work with. He just well, if he moved on, oh, well, yeah. we'll move on. Yeah. When you look at the genetic load that's increasing in the gene pool of people, you say, wow, this can't have been going on for a long time, not millions of years. That uh, that that really was it. That's that's the end of that proof, by the way. that's <laughs> that's He's now going to move on to his fourth evidence. That's, it can't have happened over millions of years. Moving on. He didn't even tell us what genetic load is. <laughs> he didn't... Oh, my goodness. He got right. nothing out of it. Well, you might all be wondering... Yeah. How the hell does genetic load get us to the Earth being 6,000 years old? Well, we don't know. We don't know. Because uh, he didn't tell us. He didn't tell us. Um, but have, as he yeah, doesn't yeah. care about this point, yeah. I don't either. No, no, no. I... <laughs> <laughs> if this represents a typical Hoven class, then no wonder his pupils are like power. You can look at the sun. The sun is burning up its fuel source. Obviously, it's burning. And it's shrinking because of it's burning up its fuel. And it is not only shrinking... It is throwing off 5 million tons a second. It's losing weight. Well, if your son's been losing weight for billions of years, if you get back in time in your imagination, the sun would be much heavier, making gravity stronger, sucking all the planets in. You cannot have the fine balance between Earth and sun with it just being in the right habitable zone for millions and billions of years while the sun's losing weight so fast. Well, you look at the moon. The moon's going around the Earth, but the moon's getting further away from the Earth. No, he's, he's done with the sun. That's he's it. That, that, that's that a little bit more out of him. It wasn't, it wasn't he's, very good. <laughs> he's done with the sun. That was it. Okay, so Hoven is trying a reductio here. Okay, mm. he's saying that if the sun had existed for more than 6,000 years, that it would have swallowed the earth a long time ago. Or at least if it had existed for millions and millions of years, it yeah. would have swallowed the earth by now. I mean, he, he's yeah. wrong, obviously. Yeah. Um, you know, a science teacher would have said that it was losing mass, not weight. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely true. That's definitely mm. true. Do you reckon this is how he taught his students? I do, actually. <laughs> Stud student, ca student came up, had a question, and he goes, it just can't happen that way. <laughs> it just can't happen that way. It's like the left recurrent <laughs> laryngeal nerve. Well, I'm not going to yeah, explain it. No, gonna, it just can't happen I'll, I'll that tell way. you another time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll tell you another, <laughs> tell you another that's, time. That's the answer he would have said to them. I'll tell you another time. I'll tell you another time. Or, it just can't happen that way. It just can't happen that way. Well, he's provided yeah. us a bit of work for us here. Yeah. Um, Mm. I, I think it'd be good for us to have a look at some calculations ourselves in a minute. Ten seconds later. So he claimed that the mass loss from the sun, the Earth's orbit, is getting larger by what was it, one point five centimeters every year. Yep. So in six thousand years, the Earth has moved uh, ninety meters. <laughs> ninety meters. Oh, is that going to get to? From, that's going to hit, isn't it? That's that's collision. <laughs> okay, good. Three hundred and forty-six minutes later. Um, so we took a quick break there just because we wanted to look up some of the numbers mm. so that we can, I don't know, rather than just ripping into him for being terrible, give you yeah. some actual information. Um, yeah. Well, one thing that we got is that the um, he's assumed, this this is less numbers, but just an assumption, of course, mm. he's assumed that the rate is consistent. It's, uh, it's kind of like assuming that a runner, as they pass over the finishing line, it's like assuming that they've been running exactly that speed for all of the marathon. Yeah. It's like, we, we don't know um, that. Like, well, you need a bit more information. Uh, and obviously, he's, yeah. he's wrong. The, yeah. the, the distance we've been moving isn't constant. No. But no, in, no, the, no. in the last 65,000 years, the Earth has moved approximately a kilometre. Now, mm. that might sound like a lot to us, but when you're, well, you're talking astronomical measurements. It's nothing. It's basically nothing. nothing. We're 147 million kilometres away from the sun. Yeah. One kilometre is going to be yeah. barely it's noticeable. Nothing. Yeah, and, and just, if we yeah. if, if from that we assume a constant rate, 
then the Earth has moved 65,000 kilometres in its lifetime. Again, sounds like a lot. But up against 147 million. Nothing. It's nothing. Yeah. And just one final note then, and that is that the amount of mass lost by the sun in its 4.5 billion years is less than half a percent of its total mass. Not not weight, mass. <laughs> no mass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would take 900 million years for the sun to lose all of its mass. Billion, sorry. That's a billion, didn't no, I? You said 900 million. 900 billion years. That's insane for it to lose its well, mass. Obviously. The... If we assume the same rate. Which yeah. you shouldn't. Okay. Well, that means it used to be closer. If you bring the moon back in closer, you get higher tides. And at some point, you get too close and they snap together like two magnets. Called the inverse square law. But would it though? <laughs> well, here's something that comes to mind. <laughs> the, the best explanation for the existence of the moon yeah. is that there was a collision with Earth. Yep. And the, the moon is part of the debris that come came off from Earth. And that's about as close as you could possibly get. It's pretty close. It's pretty close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it yeah. still managed to get where it is. Yeah, it did. Without yeah, yeah. collapsing back into Earth and blowing us back up again. <laughs> you can look at the stars in space. You can look at the living things on Earth and look at the Earth itself. The Earth is spinning, but it slows down. Now, that that's actually quite insightful. What? One of the best evidences for a young Earth, well, young Earth creationism is that the Earth spins. <laughs> I give about 30 different scientific indicators for a young earth on my seminar part one on drdino.com. But to me, the very best evidence that the earth is 6,000 years old is exactly what God, who, he's the guy who did it. No, no, no. Stop. Stop. I, <laughs> he gave the earth rotation as evidence and then he's moving on again. Didn't did explain how. Just, just said you can see it somewhere else. It is the left look on laryngeal nerve all over again. <laughs> I've done this somewhere else, but I'm doing a video on it now, but I'll talk about it somewhere else. What was the point of bringing this up? Why even bother? He said that was the beginning when he made Adam and Eve. Matthew 19, 4, Mark 10, 6. So. Oh my God. We've already done this one. Mm. The Bible says God did it. We know we've heard that a million times before now. Yeah. And that's three times you've already expressed this in this video. This three minute video, you're wasting your time. <laughs> this unholy trinity of polished herbs could have again. been done just with him. Yeah. We didn't even need the other two. Um, <laughs> you, you know, like despite that uh, satanic hobo that we got <laughs> on earlier on. Like, hobo. Uh, he, Oren, was literally <laughs> not prepared to deal with Wretched Radio. And when we put together... But despite Hovind giving a 30-year-old presentation, he still managed to be less precise and more repetitive than the satanic hobo. <laughs> that sounds like the sort of reference you could give him when he applies for his car sales job once he leaves prison. <laughs> Less precise uh, and more repetitive. Yeah, that's that's, that's very helpful. That's good. <laughs> You're talking. <laughs> this is done thirty uh, thousand miles. Yeah. Um, it's done about thirty thousand miles. Yeah. It, it can do thirty thousand it's, miles. It's, it's, it's yeah. American. It's American, so it can do three miles to the gallon. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it has done about thirty thousand miles. <laughs> And when you actually look at the clock, it's 47,000. <laughs> They're metaphorical. They're metaphorical. That was the beginning when he made Adam and Eve. Matthew 19, 4, Mark 10, 6. So I would encourage you to read that Bible. Never been disproven. And think about it. Man, this is what it says. Yeah, I mean, we, um, we'd we also encourage you to read the Bible and, yeah. and to think about what it says. Because oh, yeah. there has never been a more powerful tool for creating atheists. Yep. Maybe God is right. No. Well, he can't be right if he doesn't exist. Though I guess you could also claim that he can't be wrong either. No, so no, if he no, does want to have that one... Checkmate, atheist, you're done. Um, what gets me, again, is that he is pretending that his interpretation of the Bible is actually what God's words are. Yeah. Such a shame for all those other Christians with, you know... I know, they're, they're not real Christians. They're not real Christians. <laughs> they're not real Christians. Unbelievable. Maybe the earth is 6,000 years old. Has plenty of time to accomplish everything I know of. That's because you don't know anything. <laughs> I, it, anything yeah also six thousand years is not going to get you for instance the grand canyon it's just not on the planet if you allow one big flood in there to make the canyons <laughs> of course <laughs> there it is the flood did it. when in doubt the flood did it <laughs> yeah all right thank you for joining us
<laughs> Thank you for joining us. <laughs> when he says us, us, he really does mean us. There was two of him in the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it said, yeah, Hovind, featuring Hovind. There was two of them all along. Oh, oh shit. He wasn't repeating himself. It was his clone. <laughs> Right. Oh god. Wow. Okay, oh. that's great. Perfect. Okay, right. Yeah. Little breather. Pause the video. Get yourself another cup of S- tea or coffee. coffee. Yeah. And now on to Matt Powell. Oh god. Darwinism is so weak, and I want to end it here. Two seconds in, and uh, already a thing to say. It keeps happening yeah. with these videos, doesn't it? It's like we They're barely great. start, They're and it's great. Like, I love it. I love it. I love it. It yeah, must be because good. they just get such great points on the table right at the beginning. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, like the earth spins. <laughs> well, I suppose the thing I want to sort of say here is, well, Darwinism mm. is essentially the theory of evolution as it was proposed by Darwin. Yeah. It kind of ceased to be Darwinism once, well, Darwin ceased to be. Yeah. We, we just call it evolution. Yeah, because people <laughs> built on it and developed it, yeah. right? Um, the thing that gets me is that it's creationists that call it Darwinism, mm. and you'll find that like biologists in general and people that accept evolution in general don't call it Darwinism. No, they call, call it evolution. evolution by natural selection, <laughs> yeah, uh, or evolution broadly because yeah. it contains, as you said, Darwin's ideas plus other ideas mm. um, and theories and and frameworks and facts and so on. But one of the reasons that creationists tend to insist on Darwinism is that they they conflate it and amalgamate it so that they can pull in abiogenesis. They can say that it has something yeah. to do with the origin of life as well. Hovind's been doing this for, what, at least 30 years, and Powell's just... Who has ever seen these stickers when they go down the road? Very common. Yeah, Matt and Jer- uh, Josh has seen them. It depends on where you live, Matt, because yeah. we're in England and we just don't see them. If you're in, in a location where people accept evolution, you don't need stickers. No. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, funny enough, Yeah. we also don't tend to see Jesus stickers, because... People over here just don't tend to no. put the religious views out there. The much. English are wonderfully private people. <laughs> um, I, I will say that if I did start seeing Jesus sti- uh, stickers all over cars, yeah. I would start trolling the hell out of that. I'd have a real... Really? F- yeah, definitely. I'd troll the hell out. It's, like, really if, don't it's care. like if people start putting on their cars, <laughs> I've not been vaccinated. I would definitely troll that. Like, that would be great fun. I'd still just look at it and think, oh, you're So we have a difference of are. opinion. I'm going to heaven and you're going to hell. All okay. right? That's how this game is played. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I still don't care. <laughs> also, talking of like um, symbols and like these stickers, symbols and whatnot, mm-hmm. how often do you see people wearing necklaces containing the execution method of their favourite superhero? <laughs> that one's pretty common. That one is very common, I have you know. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Um, actually, sorry. Before we continue on, yeah. I'm already pissed off for another reason. Okay. I know that music. I love that music because I love that video game. It's from a video game. I was going to say, and, is it like a... And scene? I am very upset. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, well... I, I, I'm so nerdy here. I I know and love this game so much. It's Ace Combat 5. <clears throat> that soundtrack in, that, mm-hmm. in particular is from Mission 4, and it's called First Flight. <laughs> I, I was about to accuse you of being a nerd. Seconds in, yeah, and no, I no, already no. know that. <laughs> I was about to accuse you of being a nerd, but we deal with people that go, actually, in John 13. That is, how's it different? Um, <laughs> yeah, if you yeah, can yeah. remember that, I can recall music. Yeah, of course you can. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They're both fantasies. Now, but um, he should I, not be allowed to use that. No, anything that Powell touches. And that's why any other fans of that series out there, if he was playing Zero, I would just be closing this video now. <laughs> yeah. Just wouldn't wouldn't be allowed to carry. On. <laughs> that's why he started putting in these tracks. <laughs> No, he's clearly put these tracks in to try and get people caught on copyright. Repl- no, he, to yeah, yes. He he put in the last samurai from Hans Zimmer. Yeah, yeah. I will strangle you. Like you do not <laughs> use that track. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a joke, by the way. It's a metaphor. <laughs> Metaphorically strangled. It's metaphorical strangle. I wonder if there's any necklaces with like two hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's really dark. <laughs> well, if that's how Jesus died, that's what they'd have. I've seen them all the time. <laughs> Look, anybody that puts a Darwin fish on their car, that person might as well just tell me, I have not actually looked into Darwin at all. Anyone who puts a Jesus sticker on their car might as well mm. tell me, they have not looked into Christianity at all. Yeah, because a car is a possession and Jesus told you to give up your worldly possessions. Yeah, that's really, really weird. Mm. Yeah. Why aren't more Christians communists? 
Good point. Good point. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, I like it. That's true. Darwin could not even get a job. You're putting a sticker of a guy that could not even get a job. His dad had to get him a job. Now, I know Matt Powell is completely unfamiliar with education. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I could be any harsher than that. <laughs> he <laughs> is a nasty individual to a lot of people. I know. So I, I think you it's, reap what I think you it's fair. Yeah. But Darwin was at it was at Christ Christ College in Cambridge mm -hmm. until 1831, mm -hmm. and it was his professor there that proposed he join the Beagle's voyage. And just to be clear, his professor wasn't also his dad, was it? No, it oh, wasn't. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, interesting. And right. and interestingly yeah, yeah, yeah. enough, yeah, yeah. Um, his father was actually initially opposed to Darwin joining this voyage, so um, mm. well, he go. didn't help him get this job because mm. he didn't want him to have it. Yeah, what was it? What was he said just a moment ago? It was, um... Oh, just, yeah. Yeah, that was it. I have not actually looked into Darwin at all. Ah, oh, yeah, that sprinkle yeah. of honesty. Beautiful. You love to see it. You love to see it. <laughs> also, is it just me, or is Powell somehow getting worse? Like, the level of non-sequitur here is insane. Person X couldn't get a job, therefore anything they think of is false. Do you know, um, yeah. Jesus couldn't get a job. <laughs> <laughs> he did get a small loan from his father to to do, and became the, eventually became the man who repelled. But um, yeah, his, his job his, his job now though is is largely just to sort of hang around on on Christian walls, necks, and cars. And you know what? His father did get him that job. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Actually. <laughs> he was such a failure in life, an unpaid job as a comforter for a ship captain as they're floating about near the Galapagos. Unpaid job. It was a. It was a self-funded scientific voyage, wasn't it? Yep. I mean, now, I know Matt won't do anything unless he's paid for it. That's, that's kind of why he does his preaching. Um, it's only there to earn him those easy bucks from gullible fools. And, and heaven, and heaven. And, and, yeah. Nah. nah. <laughs> that, that's secondary. Um, <laughs> yeah, I honestly no, yeah, don't yeah, know. No, I feel like he's just a pure grifter. Yeah. But people like Darwin and Jesus, they, they didn't need to receive money to do their work. No, they did not. But the thing that really got me is his use of the word comforter. Yeah, it's a bit... Like, it's a bit odd, that's isn't it? used in in the sense of normally for sexual reasons. That that's generally what my yeah, mind yeah, yeah. goes to when you someone say they're a comforter. Mm. Um, yeah. No, he he was invited there as a naturalist and a gentleman. A gentleman. Yeah. Now now I'm understanding the comfort. That's where that's coming in. What, gentleman. Yeah. I think he's got confused between naturalist and naturist. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All this time, that, gets, that, think, that correlates with him saying, I don't really know much about Darwin. Yeah. <laughs> he thinks he's naturist. <laughs> he thinks he's just quite slight to walk around in the nude. That's absolutely brilliant. But he is a gentleman, so he's a nudist yeah, yeah, with the yeah, hat. Yeah. He, he is, he is. Uh, yeah, Darwin didn't need to be earning money to investigate the world, right? No. He didn't need it. Whereas, um, well, he's happy to receive money from Daddy Hoven, didn't he? Yeah, he is. He's happy to, to did, do um, that. Yeah. Did Daddy Hoven get Matt Powell this job? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. I think he even lives in his house. Oh, it's creepy, isn't it? Oh, Maybe is, it, he's, is he, he? Is it as a naturalist? No, as a comforter. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> what a joke. This is the man that they say is so scientific. They have a statue of Darwin. How, sorry, how many statues of Jesus are there? Quite a few. I yeah. mean, I'd, I'd quite be in favour of, you know, the, the big one in uh, Rio, de, Rio de Janeiro no, to come down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll put a massive one of Darwin up there. Uh, in his naturist state, or <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so amazing! I got to see the Darwin statue. Oh, really? Darwin said, and I quote: "Often a cold shudder has run through me, and I've asked myself whether I've devoted myself to a fantasy." Oh, really? Well, Matt Powell said, and I quote: "I've never looked into Darwin. I have not actually looked into Darwin at all. I have not actually looked into Darwin at all." Oh, so amazing. I got to see the Darwin statue. Oh, really? Darwin said, and I quote, Often a cold shudder has run through me, and I've asked myself whether I've devoted myself to a fantasy. Charles Darwin was afraid that he was living in a fantasy. <sighs> We've got another deflate, haven't we? This is like Lucas from Deflate last week, again with Aaron Ra. Yep. Where, um, yeah, we got a, an apologist, quote mining Darwin, pretending that he had doubts or something. Let's... To be honest, I could almost guarantee... And mm. granted, I'm, I'm not certain, 
Well, Matt was going to pick me up on not being certain. Um, but I <laughs> can yeah. almost guarantee that the following sentence is probably going to start with something in the, in the realms of but. Yeah. And then a, go on to explain but, why something is, is true. It normally is. Let's, let, let, let's Google it. Let's Google it, okay? Five minutes later. Cool. Um, I was wrong. And he's going to quote mine that as well. Um, <laughs> yeah. This particular quote comes from a, a letter to his mentor, Charles Lyle, where he expresses consideration of the times that humans have pursued an idea that has turned out to be false. And he mm. wondered if it of his own. But the support that he's had from his, his mentors and his peers have helped to reinforce this sort of goal of, in his pursuit of truth. Yeah. Context. Important. Th- this one quote where they have Darwin actually expressing some modicum of self-doubt and they yep. still fuck it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least this time they did find the self-doubt part, but they... Yeah, the quote mining itself messes that part up. Is it just me, or do you think that Powell, Powell's job is to grossly misrepresent things? Do you reckon that's, that's what he's paid to do? Yeah. You know, Brother Parsons, if I got up here and I said, no, Will, it's been great giving this message here tonight, but I'm afraid I'm living in a fantasy. Well, that's a quote I think we'll keep for the future. <laughs> it is. He likes quote mining. No, Will, it's been great giving this message here tonight, but I'm afraid I'm living in a fantasy. Would you trust anything that I'm saying? No. So when Darwin says, I'm afraid I'm living a fantasy, why in the world would you trust somebody like that? Because humility is a virtue. It even says that in the Bible. (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, man, if if someone says to me, here's my thoughts, I'm not completely certain of this, but this is why I think it's true. Mm. I think I'd probably ask them, okay, go on then, give, give us what you've got. I'll have a look and I'll see if I agree with you. I'm with you on that. And if someone was to come up and say, I'm 100% certain on something, and not only that, I'm 100% certain on on, on topics where the, our best minds are nowhere near 100%, I'm, I'm going to call bull. Yeah, like, yeah I'm with you on that's that. Not, that's not a good thing. Why not trust somebody that said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life? Oh, that sounds a bit, bit arrogant to me. Just a little bit arrogant if someone says that. If someone says yeah. to me, I am the way, the truth, and the life, mm. and that salvation is only through me, then the first thing I'm going to say to them, fucking prove it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what if they then threaten you with eternal punishment if you don't believe them? Fucking prove that as well. <laughs> <laughs> somebody who spoke with absolutes. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. Not somebody who says, I'm afraid I'm living in a fantasy. Jesus didn't speak like that. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Did Jesus say that? Or did John say that 60 to 70 years after the former supposedly died? Well, if I say it with confidence, will you then believe it? Well, if, if you say that if you are I the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah, if I say give it, it. Give it. Give it. Okay, okay. I wanted to do the whacked uh, style, but you no, told me off no, for that, no, okay? Please, no. I am the way. The truth and the life. Oh, good. Did it. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck off, Matt. (laughs) No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus spoke in absolutes. Darwin said, I'm afraid I'm living in a fantasy. Who are you going to trust, folks? Are you going to trust God or are you going to trust man? Man, because I, I know man is real. That does help. It does. It does, it does help, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who are you going to trust? A brilliant scientist whose theory and works have stood the test of time, being, you know, criticised from every single angle with new fields, being able to completely overturn his, his work, or someone who consistently misrepresents, distorts, and manipulates information? I'm sure all of that was great. I only heard mm. the very first bit when you went, who are going to trust? Because I just suddenly thought of like an off-brand Ghostbusters. Yes. If there's something natural in the neighbourhood, who are you going to trust? Godbusters. Are you going to trust the man who couldn't get a job? The man who was a failure in life? Is he talking about Jesus again? What do you mean a failure in life? Well, yeah, well Jesus didn't do so well at that preaching thing. That he, they killed him for it. Uh, yeah, no, I see what I'd say that's from. a failure yeah, of life. Yeah, it's a failure of <laughs> he, life. He didn't keep living. <laughs> he didn't keep living. That's very, very true. Although he didn't really die, you know. Uh, it's a sacrifice where actually something wasn't sacrificed. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, no, he's talking about the guy who is 
His work is the, the foundation of modern scientific knowledge. That's the guy who he thinks is a failure. The man who literally went onto a ship, landed on the Galapagos, saw a couple of finches and concluded that finches and bananas were related. That's not what he concluded. But sod it, I don't care anymore. Yeah, I, I'm done with this clown. Yeah. Um, finished. Done. I, I'm yeah. actually finished with him abusing this soundtrack. So. No, no, I feel your pain. That's probably really, really nasty. Well, so there you have it, everybody. That was the uh, holy, unholy trinity of polished herds. And which which one worse? do you think was worse? Yeah, what was worse? Go on, what's yours? What do you think was worse of the all three? You can't add, so, by the way, the fact so, that we had orange presents to make that one bumped. That was a bit more tolerable because yeah. orange was Yeah, there. yeah, you have to you so, ignore that. But bit. the thing is, is in the Wretched Radio one, yeah. he managed to say literally nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, there, there was nothing. nothing. Nothing in that. Nothing. Um, in the Hovind one, he... No, he said literally nothing in that one either. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Well, no, um, no, 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 no. He said that it, the, earth the Earth was spins, spinning. The earth but spins. he didn't provide why that was no, evidence. Didn't. No, so didn't. if yeah, he didn't yeah. provide evidence for his claims... Yeah, he may as well have went... You can door. dismiss all of them. A door's made of wood. So that was another mm. nothing. Yeah. Um, and Matt Powell said... Um, that was atrocious. You can't trust... Darwin because he expressed some humility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, he did. That is the so. Claim. By virtue of the fact that he actually said something that's mm-hmm. stupid, mm. whereas the other two said nothing. Yep. Matt Powell is the worst. That's fair. I like it. I'm with that's you. how I'm working it. No, out. I actually the guy who claims to be a science teacher. I, I, think, <laughs> I think I think that was terrible. Yeah. Like that that was genuinely one of the most half asked anything I've ever seen. Well, what, what I think about we've done yeah, yeah. in this one is we have probably picked the three lowest of low fruits yeah. we've ever done. That was atrocious, yeah. Um, and we ended up, because they said basically nothing, mm. we were criticising them more as being shit YouTubers yeah. rather than their actual evidence. Yeah. And they are really shit YouTubers. When mm. you think they had three minutes yeah. to communicate some very simple ideas. Yeah didn't even manage you know so they didn't give themselves enough time to begin with no and, and then, then didn't fucking say anything <laughs> and, and hovind even had two people in it and he couldn't he couldn't get the points across he had two hovinds, <laughs> two hovinds. expressing <laughs> the same thing but talking of shit youtubers it's time that we plug each other's channel yeah yeah um do you want to go first or second oh I'll, uh, I'll go first go on you got time. this you got um, this you got this you guys already know that mm. uh steve's been creating you channels to separate things out yeah um so if you want to find it you can check it out at uh, one hand under the table philosophy um. <laughs> right i have to get you back for that one okay <laughs> if you want to check out a channel that publishes once every year or so <laughs> yeah, that's accurate <laughs> yeah i'm uh, being nice and being accurate you're good yeah, yeah if you want to see the man that's got a youtube channel because his father gave him a job go. <laughs> well that's it Done. We're done. Enjoy your life. Yeah. Until you don't have to time. listen to them again. I don't. No. I don't think I want to do a Paul or Hoven video again. <laughs> I don't. But they're going to make us do it because it's for entertainment entertainment values. Let's go. Bye. Bye. <laughs>